Welcome to episode 13 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how one of Loki's pranks got his lips sewed shut in the myth of the treasures of the gods. Somehow, the shape changer got into Sif's locked bedroom. Smiling to himself, he pulled out a curved knife and moved to her bedside. Thor's wife was breathing deeply, evenly, dead to worldly sorrows. Then Loki raised his knife. With quick, deft strokes, he lopped off Sif's head of shining hair. Her hair, which as she moved, rippled and gleamed and changed from gold to gold like swaying corn. Sif murmured, but she did not wake. The hair left on her cropped head stuck up like stubble. Loki scooped up the skeins. He dropped Sif's sheen hair to the floor, a soft, glowing mass. The trickster looked at it and grinned, and then he left Sif's bedroom. <laughs> a joke, protested Loki, dangling a foot off the ground. What kind of joke, shouted Thor, not losing his grip for one moment. Only a joke, whined the Sky Traveler. All morning, Sif had sobbed and sobbed. She knew and Thor knew that only Loki would have shorn her hair. Well, what are you going to do about it, demanded Thor. I'll replace it, yelped Loki. I'll get help from the dwarves. I promise to replace it. Or else, said Thor, and he dumped Loki on the ground. Loki raised both hands and cautiously explored the top of his head. Or else, Thor said, I'll smash every bone in your body. Loki straightened his clothes and smoothed his hair, and then suddenly he winked at Thor. He heard out of Asgard over Bifrost and down into the land of the Dark Elves. He picked his way through a chain of chilly potholes, and he skirted dark and shining pools until he reached a great cave, the home of the sons of Ivaldi. Sly God explained to the two dwarves the reason for his journey. Without finding, he need describe just how Sif had lost her hair. Only the dwarves are skilled enough smiths, he said, and only the sons of Ivaldi could spin gold as fine as Sif's hair and imbue it with such magic that it will grow on her head. What will we get out of this? was all the sons of Ivaldi wanted to know. The thanks of Sif and Thor and the friendship of the gods, said Loki. That counts for a great deal. And about that I give you my oath that I'll repair you in full measure when you have need of me. The dwarves could see that although Loki offered nothing but promises, they were likely to get the better of the bargain, since the most they could lose was a little effort and a few ounces of gold. They piled wood onto the furnace in the corner of their cave, and while one dwarf worked the bellows, the other began to hammer and spin the gold. Loki watched and marveled, and his eyes flickered red and green in the firelight. The sons of Ivaldi made a long wave of fine golden strands, and as they worked, they murmured spells over them. The hair hung over Loki's outstretched arm like a single shining sheet, and yet a breath of air was enough to ruffle it. To waste this blaze is no one's advantage, said one of the dwarves. We can please the gods at no further expense, said the other. So the sons of Ivaldi set to work again, and before the furnace had begun to lose any of its heat, they fashioned a marvelous ship for Freyr called Skidbladnir, and forge for Odin a spear called Gungnir, as strong as it was slender. Then the two dwarves gave Loki the ship and the spear and explained the magic power. 
As usual, Loki was at no loss for words. His mouth was full of air, thanks and compliments and promises to hurry back with news of what the gods thought of such gifts. On his way back through the dismal underground caverns, Loki had an idea. He had not headed straight for the welcoming light of Midgard, but turned down a long aisle studded with rock pillars and carrying the three treasures, walked into the hall of Brock and Itri. The dwarf brothers stood up to meet Loki, but when they saw the skein of hair and the ship and the spear, they ignored him entirely. Their hearts quickened and their fingertips tingled. Loki let them take the treasures out of his hands and turn them over and over, watching their scorn and envy grow. Have you ever seen such work? exclaimed Loki. Such perfect craftsmanship. Yes, said Brock. Whose? asked Loki. My own, said Atri. My own, said Atri bluntly. Well then, said Loki slowly, as if the thought were just forming in his mind, you think you could make treasures as fine as these? Not as fine, Brock said. Finer, said Atri. No, said Loki craftily. Surely not. I'll stick my head on it, Brock. I'll stick my head that your brother can't forge treasures the like of these. Brock and Atri were very eager to take up this challenge. It occurred to them that if they were as good as their boast, not only would they be rid of the schemer Loki, but the treasures made by the sons of Ivaldi would be theirs for the taking. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.